it is 6 o'clock, and it is June 6th, and the select board meeting is called to order. General public comment is first. Actually, Chuck, you're... No, you are on the public comment. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not on the agenda. No, I thought, okay, I thought we'd push it. 6.05. Okay, got it. Um, so, hopefully you all saw the email from Karen Horn, uh, as the Harbor Committee has, uh, is making a recommendation that the town grant CD Fiber $50,000, which will unlock a $50,000 matching grant from the Vermont Community Broadband Board. Um, and it is a little bit time sensitive, so though we are also doing surveys for the community and so forth for other ways we may recommend using the ARPA funds, um, CD, the CD Fiber one is time sensitive to get that matching grant. And so we, went, we are going ahead and making that recommendation. Um, I have provided Sasha with the documents that will need to be finalized and signed and so forth. So really my ask is um, review the documents and in two weeks time I'll make sure we're on the agenda for, uh, for an actual vote as to you know, whether, whether we want to proceed. Yeah, so that will be next meeting at 6.05. Yes. Okay. What's the um, <clears throat> deadline for time, when you say time sensitive, yeah. so we know what we're all working with? So the, the deadline is when the funds run out for September 15th, whichever is sooner. Um, because BCBB put together a $1.5 million uh, grant, and if other towns capitalize on it first, then we, we don't get matching okay. funds. So the sooner the better. Sooner the better. Um, we have commitments from four towns already. Middlesex has given us 100,000. Worcester has given us 50,000. Waterbury has given us 53,000. And uh, Cabot, I don't recall, you know, but they've also you know, so. I, I have a question as far as the questioning procedure. Should we go through Sasha and then Sasha? Because we want the questions as part of the public record, I believe, right? Right. Send them to Sasha, and Sasha will forward them on. Yeah, that would be the way we do it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions for Chuck? Well, that sounds sounds good. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Yeah, looks um, like a looks like a real plus. Do you let me know if you have questions about the documentation? Okay. I think Travis has got a question. Travis, you have a question? Yeah, well, not, not for Chuck, but okay. for just public comment. Okay. Um, I'd just like to thank the uh, select board or whoever the parties to be are uh, for finally updating the VTrans map on the town website. Uh, it actually is a brand new version, 2022, and uh, I'd just like to, it's, it's, it's very much appreciated to uh, finally see an updated map. Yep, that would be would be good. We and honestly, thank you for that, pointing that out. I, yeah. I really didn't, I didn't see to that. Search on that map for over ten years. Yeah, yeah. So that's no, good. I appreciate that stuff. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Anything else? That's um, fun. there is, but it's a um, has to do with uh, Tom Martin overseeing uh, the zoning administrator and. Uh, I brought some things to the current administration, zoning administrator, um, regarding a subdivision on Morristown Mountain Road that was subdivided into four parcels of land that never ever went in front of the DRB. And uh, that was a Kaminsky property. And uh, when talking to uh, the zoning administrator, Claire Rock, I believe her name is, uh, she told me that Tom uh, said uh, not to look into it. And uh, then there was another uh, issue with George Wells' uh, property up on uh, Legal Trail 1. And uh, he, again, never went in front of the uh, DRB to get a zoning permit. And then I'm going to address that one later yeah, yeah. on. Because I've been looking into that myself quite a bit with Denise. So I could talk about that a little bit further uh, yeah, later on. Eventually, yeah. Um, and then also there's a new uh, person looking to uh, develop out in that uh, Legal Trail 1, the end of Cobb Hill Road, and then turns Legal Trail 1. And um, 
That person uh, also uh, should hope would go in front of the DRB, like uh, the zoning zoning regulations indicate. And also, George Wells got another permit this year from Clear Rock uh, out on the out on another piece of parcel or the same piece of parcel. Um, and again, even if it's a garage, which uh, up on uh, Jones Brook, uh, there was a person there that asked to build a garage at his camp, and he went in front of the DRB. He, he did all the due diligence and uh, got approved for it. And uh, just want to make sure that the procedures are followed through zoning. And again, Tom told uh, Claire Rock to uh, not look into those issues. Hmm. So yeah. that's a little concerning. That's it. Thank you. OK. Thanks, Patrick. So you'll be around all meeting, right? Oh, yes. Because we'll be talking about some of these things later. Thank you. Good night, Chuck. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Stormwater project. So, my understanding, Ray, is that there was going to be a um, site meeting on Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, no, site meeting, he said he could do it on Thursday, on the 9th. Oh, okay. I thought it was Wednesday. No, Wednesday it would have to be Zoom, unless they change that. I, I think it got changed back to Wednesday. John, we can verify that in the morning okay. to be sure. Okay. But, um, I don't think Ray Dago could make it on Thursday, so I think we've got to move back to Wednesday. Okay. But I mean, I have it written down as Wednesday. But yeah, because I had what, what I had was I, I got the email from Cheryl Lynn, and it said that um, uh, Andres could only do a site visit on the 9th. And if it were, had to be the eighth, then it would be a Zoom meeting, and then we'd have a site visit later in the summer. Yeah. So uh, the, I think there was an update to that. that okay. Andre is going to send two of his associates to the meeting. Oh. Okay. Andre won't be here Wednesday. Okay. Right. He's going to send his associates, and Ray Dago will be here. So all, okay. the, all the parties will be here okay. on Wednesday. I believe right. at one o'clock. Okay. All right. That'll um, be good. But um, so at that time, you know, we're going to discuss this project again. I think. Um, the question is, you know, on the agenda to hold off until 23 or not. Uh, you know, my feeling is it's it's June now, and to we would want that parking lot done by the time school starts. And I don't see that uh, if we put it out to bid this week, we'd still wouldn't have bids till the end of the month. Right. You got a contract right. signing. You got six weeks of work. Uh, it. It's not, I don't think it's a good idea to try to get it done this year, even though we all would like to see it done. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, you know, I'm not the only voice here, but I think that's going to be my, uh, my recommendation. It's actually got even bids by the end of the Yeah, I, you know, I, and, and knowing what uh, all the contractors are pretty busy right now and the pricing is way up, I, I just think that uh, if we put out a bid now, we'll probably reject the bids and put it out for bid yet anyway, so. All right. Uh, but we can, um, I don't know if you want to take a vote as a select board on what to do or, or wait till we meeting on Wednesday. I think we should probably, it depends on the rest of the board, but. Well, my only other comment would be, and I'd be more than happy to jump in and help at some point, but, you know, develop a timeline so that if we are going to put it off to 2023, that on, you know, set September, Request for proposals will exactly. go out, and then you know the contractor has this month of days to bid it, and then we you know we can decide by town meeting or some you know some schedule. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. the contract is signed and ready to go come April or May. Or right. As I think the, the problem was you know we were on time on a timeline, a very detailed timeline, um, until um, Pam D'Andrea left. Yes. CBRPC and then yeah, things kind of fell apart and Brian, yeah. you know, Brian Boyd has taken over, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying that it was yeah. any No, no, I just, right I, now, right? you know, I, I, as, as Ray again. was saying, that, yeah. uh, it's, it's really too bad because this has been going on, um, like all of our projects, for yeah, quite a few it's years. A, it's a problem every spring <clears> with the water behind the school. Yeah. It's a problem with the parking lot because it's not paid, but I just, I just don't know what else we can do at right. this point. Yeah. Live with it another year. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, anything else on, on that? So I just, just, we'll just verify that uh, it'll be a site meeting. But, but it sounds like it's going to be a site meeting anyway. So yeah, that'll be good. Because I did email Brian too. Excuse me. Guys <coughs> from the state will probably say the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on the stormwater project? And moving on, uh, next up is uh, Ira Hatch. Not that big e. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I got a, uh, a letter from Tom, says it from the board, about how the, uh, my property had been taken away and given to someone else, and I wanted to know how that happened and he sent me a thing here that says that they put the they were given the deeds in the of the area mm -hmm. and it took one point and from that they put the rest of them in place. Right. Uh, I had been paying taxes on the same amount of property for almost forty years, uh, which it wasn't correct either. And I really would like to know if the listers, if they, how they find these spots where somebody comes to check on, right? I mean, they, they, they're not taking every map and every deed in the whole town and going through every one of them and, and deciding whether they're right on the acreage that the tax map says. Right. So I, 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 I assume that there are concerns. There's either a survey, a piece of land bought or sold, or a conflict that would draw them to an area where they would then start looking at that mm -hmm. stuff. Right. And I'd like to know what drew them in there in the first place. Well, the, again, it was CAI that did, did all the work. But right, the listeners, the listeners yeah. are, are the ones. <clears throat> now, uh, the, the way it turned out, the, 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 my neighbor was saying that my property was his. I, I, w I was gone for 12 years uh, from town here, uh, taking care of my folks. And so I wasn't present. Uh, the land had been sold. I didn't even know who owned the land, but I knew that they were saying things because they'd said things to my neighbors and stuff that they owned my piece of land. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I feel that somebody drew them into that area to do that. Now, at the same time, another neighbor of mine lost a piece of property also. This fellow that my, my neighbor that was given that property had been saying that it was his property right along. I want to know, and, and he, he gained that, and they also, the other fellow only lost a quarter of an acre, but he only had a uh, Acre and, uh, and seven, uh, eight point seven. Um, the, he lost a quarter acre. That that little piece there, I don't know how that even falls into what they would be looking for. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel that the list, the lister, or listers, uh, one of them did all this. I feel that he had. Uh, or she had talked to Kim and brought what he had to say to the tax people. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody <clears throat> said, no, that didn't happen. So I want to know how these things did happen. Yeah. 
I mean, I was, at first, I wanted to sue the town, right? I mean, they made me do a survey, I was forced into that, and, and, then, and then I'm feeling as though I'm being forced to get a lawyer to bring the, against the town. Uh, I don't feel that I, I want to do that any longer. I just want to know the truth of how it came to be. Um, uh, uh, when I was, I, I had, the only, the only meeting that I had to go to was one for uh, a reappraisal, right? So I went right. to, to that and I, and I said, well, uh, you're, I'm paying less than what I should, but that's, the, the, and, and that, that is a problem either way. Uh, it would seem to me it would be to the town also, but um, yeah. Do you, do, you, do you kind of get the drift of what I'm no, saying? No, I, 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 I do. Uh, pretty much the letter that you got from the board pretty much spelled out what we know. Well, so whether there was any the, conversation between the listeners and CII, CII about on the on the letter it says here, right? <laughs> it's, I mean. Do you know what this letter says? Yes. You do. Okay. Right here. okay, good. I was hoping you did. Uh, so essentially it was not given to the next parcel over. He he made an example out of ten acres. Mm -hmm. uh, and and then and then said this. So essentially it was not given to the next parcel over. Right. It was and and I had said that, that my land was given up. So i i it almost is like a He's saying, well, that didn't happen. Uh, well, that did happen. They did give the land to uh, the neighbor. Mm -hmm. Kim was his name. Uh -huh. And they gave him that acreage. And it says here, you know, so essentially we didn't do that. I mean, that, so does that mean that he, well, what does that mean? Well, it was not given to the next parcel over. It was just simply missed due to lack of information being given. Right, that's I, all we have. So, but I don't know what that has to do with with anything that I had asked. I asked how how this could happen. Right, well, right, and, it may, and maybe that was the wrong some, uh, question. Somebody wasn't doing their doing their job, and all I can tell you is that I can't speak for what's happened in the past, but we've done away with listers. Well, that so. made me feel real good because I, I I had a a, a bigger bitch than I do now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm getting over it and I need to get over it because it's been bothering me for four years now. So, but I made this appointment. So I yeah. talked to Cheryl earlier and I felt much better about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But I did make the appointment. I wouldn't just leave you wondering where the hell I was. Right. Here I am. And, okay. and that, that's the question that I have. I, I want to know really if the and if the lister had talked to uh, Kemp and then brought what he said to the tax people. And like I said, I, I don't have any intentions of suing the town anymore, but I want to know the truth. Right. We don't know any more than... So, <laughs> so we don't know the truth, any of us, right? <laughs> And I don't know how to find it. Right, right. So I guess that's all. Yeah. But I didn't want to just leave you hanging. I mean, have you have you spoken with Don Butson? I have not, out. but okay. but I, I I'm probably going to. Yeah, make definitely do. Call. Yeah. I, I could, because I'd like to know, and, and I, like I said, it, it just seems foolish to me to to, to to go after the town. I mean, I live here. I, I'm going to pay part of it back. <laughs> 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 so, uh, okay. I guess that's okay. That's all. Hmm. I thank you for listening to me, okay. and uh, <coughs> y'all have a good day. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <coughs> what did this happen? Five. Two thousand seventeen. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a mess. Unbelievable mess. I mean, there were 200, 
acre parcels that got messed up. So. Well, hopefully we have a new zoning administrator. Karen? Hey. Have a seat. Thanks, <coughs> Good, how about you? Good. <clears throat> nice to meet so, you all. Yeah, same there. Maybe we so, should introduce ourselves. Yeah, my name's Don Wexler. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi. Don Hogan Bloom. Ray Washburn. Ray Streeter. And Tom Martin, the chair, is so, off. Well, please. Come down with COVID. Oh. And that's our fire chief on here. <coughs> well, he's fire chief. And many other things. Yeah, like animal animal things yeah. Name of uh, things off. Yeah. Animal control officer. Control officer. Oh, okay. <coughs> Runs a lot of Yeah. Where's my head? Runs a bar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a general good guy. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so we've um, seen your resume. Very impressive. And I guess at this point, um, why don't you just tell us about yourself a little bit and sure. why, why you're interested and... <clears throat> sure. So I'm originally from Malone, New York, a few hours um, west, northwest of here, on the Canadian border. I moved to Vermont a little over 20 years ago and um, have owned a home in St. Albans and then moved to Burlington and then six years ago moved to the Valley. Um, lived in Waitsfield and then moved to Faison um, and owned home there. I, my main background is um, scientific. I graduated with a biology degree, minor in ecology. Um, I, forgive me if I'm just repeating what's already on my resume and you've seen that, but... Um, and I was in the laboratory field um, doing microbiological and chemical analysis for 12 years. And then I switched over to coffee, kind of fell in love with the beverage, and started working in coffee labs, and did some time at Keurig Green Mountain, and then um, I'm currently working at a laboratory in Heinsberg called Coffee Enterprises, which I am planning to leave in a couple of weeks, so that I can focus on my roasting business, I, which I started in 2017. I roast out of the, uh, convert the loft of my garage to a roasting facility, and I supply through Mountain um, and a couple of other places in the valley. And I'm looking to spend more time on that. That's the intention of leaving my Heinsberg position. And I am still needing to have some additional income to support my household. Um, so I'm not. I'm looking to go down from working two full-time jobs and. Uh, still have a part-time job. So this is kind of the sweet spot uh, for where I'm at in my life and my two to five year plan is to open a brick and mortar, hopefully in this area. Um, but for now, I am opening a mobile operation and um, hopefully being the zoning administrator. <laughs> um, so my relative, my uh, experience that relates to this position is that I'm currently the chair of the Faison uh, Planning Commission. I've been attending meetings for five years, um, shortly after I moved here. I just had an interest in participating mostly as civic duty, but also I think it's really important if you have an opinion about something that you're informed before you form that opinion. And then I joined the Planning Commission as a formal member two and a half years ago, and uh, I was just elected chair in March. So also relevant experience is that I have a lot of technical uh, reading, writing, and editing experience, writing standard operating procedures in the lab atmosphere, um, conducting and um, going through auditing um, at the state level, and um, yeah, lots of technical experience. <laughs> um, drafting LUR language, that's uh, what we're currently doing. We're just finishing and based in our LUR edits for this season and hopefully putting those before the public in the next couple of months. Um, so that's, that's what I've got going on. Okay, that's, that's true. So with all that, you feel like you can do your do like 10 hours a week or whatever it is for I'll be leaving my full-time job in Pittsburgh, yeah. so yeah, it's yeah. 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 yeah.
No, if you just said in resume, it'd be perfect. It's a perfect opportunity for us. <clears throat> yeah, that would work for us and work for you. But I mean, I also know this face is looking for his own They are. They're looking for 35 hours a week. Oh, oh they are. And yeah. that is beyond what I can contribute. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't know if they could, you know, you could do both. That would be great if we, like the town, pass. could yeah. find someone to do that. Um, I think that it is an extreme challenge to find someone that could do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now I have degrees in biology and what biology and ecology. Nice. Oh. <laughs> so you're hard. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, um, yes. one of the probably the major problem right now is uh, number one, our previous Soviet administrator issued permits that did not comply with something. Mm. And um, so going forward, mm. that's kind of stuff. Yeah. We need to have some, uh, we need to have this done by the book. And um, at this point, the building permit is only signed by the zoning administrator. There's no check by the select board on that. So I think I'm going to recommend to the board that at least for a while, that once, a, once you sign off before the permit is really issued, we need to have the A select board member sign off as well to make it a valid permit. Because That's uh, reasonable. it just it just slipping through the loops here, yeah, and, and you know there's a lot of permits that are pretty straightforward, sure. but uh, at, and you'll know once you get into the zoning position you can see where mistakes have been made, some serious mistakes okay. uh, that I don't know how we're going to fix yet, but we're going to fix them. I hope, uh, but Happy we need time. to we need to get some checks and balances in there that it sounds uh, like it not. It's not that uh, we're taking away anything from any from you or anybody else, but right, no. I think it's important that somebody look at this stuff before it becomes a, 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 a permit. You know, we do the our, our curb cut, the select board signs off, and Martin, the road permit signs mm -hmm. off, everybody signs off. But for some reason, a building permit gets validated uh, on just one person's signature. And, that's, and that's, is that something you think you'll change in your procedures as well? I, I think so. I think so. If there's a if there's a way to do it, mm -hmm. you know, somehow we've got to we got to do something. Yeah. And especially <laughs> the trail class four. The trail class four roads are a, a huge that issue. Yeah. So. Um, have you run into issues where permits were? issued that should have gone through the DRB process? Either? Exactly. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. So that's yeah, that's, have, that's the big, one of the big problems. We've got a building permit <clears throat> that doesn't even have an address on it that's signed mm -hmm. up on. You know, doesn't it have that? It just says Cobb Hill Road. And, and it's signed. You know, uh, it, it, it just goes on and on. It's, uh, it's, it's sad. It, it badly I'm got really down to this point. Yeah. It's, it's it yeah. is what it is right now, but you know. So I don't even know if that's a valid permit. I'm going, and we could talk about this later. But I, I believe that that's not really a valid permit because it's not even in the owner's name. It's in the previous owner's name. Well, the owner when that was signed. Well, it's yeah. yeah. So there's there's several issues here. Um, well, I, just to address that, I am a huge proponent for the QC check. You know, having been in the lab field. Oh my life, we, we always have that checks and balances, everything someone does, another set of eyes has to review that before it goes out the door, before the report goes out the door, before a proposal goes out the door, so um, I think that's great, and I'm always happy to be that second set of eyes also, so I'm, I have no problem with someone reviewing my work, I welcome that, <laughs> um, absolutely. Okay, that's, that's excellent. Hey, John, yeah, this is, this is Dave Stapleton. I, oh, hey. Hello. How you doing? <laughs> Hi, Karen. Good to see you again. Okay. So uh, we talked to Karen uh, last week, and I, I just uh, wanted to make sure you realize she has some background in quality assurance and quality control. And so one thought I had was, if we do hire her, maybe we should have her help us come up with a quality control system for permits. That would be fine. Yeah. 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 I mean, anything to 
anything is better than what we have right now. We need to we need to go forward with some sort of quality control. Sure, and it doesn't have to be elaborate. It can be pretty simple and straightforward. But I think yeah. you're right. Just having that process in place is. Karen, with all that said, I have a question for you. Sure. The argument. I did uh, see you first at the uh, Planning Commission about a week ago. And uh, would, you, would you be able for meetings, like when DRB has a meeting, the Planning Commission has a meeting, the Select Board has a meeting in the evenings mm -hmm. to be able to come to those meetings if it has to be with zoning regulations, which the Planning Commission is currently working on? Yes, I, I, the only thing I think might be tricky is because I'm the chair of the Planning Commission of Basin, and I do hope to retain that position. Um, that might be a bit of an issue with scheduling. So we meet every second Monday of the month, um, so I don't know if that conflicts with any of the schedules here. But otherwise, yes, absolutely happy. I'm kind of a meeting addict, actually. so. Um, if it helps me do my job better, better than, yeah. Okay. And um, we have a, an idea of what we would <clears throat> like to pay because we also realized that we uh, were underpaying the, our previous zoning administrator. Did you have any thoughts on anything that you would? <clears throat> we would have to receive or anything like that? Um, well, the position I saw advertised on Front Porch Forum, I think it said $30 an hour. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we hadn't actually nailed it down. That was a while ago. Oh, yeah, that was a while ago. So, so, Back in March, maybe April. so what we were thinking was, you know, somewhere between 30 and 35, and, and so maybe if we started at 33, and then with a uh, <clears throat> with a um, idea that you know, like, come four to six months, we'd review it mm. and could could bump it up to say 35. Okay. Sure. I I do have some questions on my own. As well. Okay. Sure. That's all right. Um, <clears throat> So the other, so Sasha, you said this advertisement that I saw on Front Porch Forum was a little dated. Um, okay, so at that time, I think it was advertised as 10 to 12 hours a week on average. Um, and I thought, wow, for a zoning administrator position, that seems uh, a little bit low on the low end of hours. Um, do you think that 10 to 12 hours a week average still makes sense? I think initially it'll definitely be more than that and it'll mm -hmm. drop off probably. Um, okay. And it's, it's so not, it's, okay. uh, it's, it's really hard to put any time uh, number on that because some weeks it could be 20 hours. Sure, it's other week, other weeks, right? yeah, sure. other weeks could be five or none. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's why we said 10 to 12 on the average. Average, yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, that's insightful like, that you provide a minimum as well. So, um, Okay, because I do have some limits on the time, as you know, I have a lot going on. Um, so I'm just thinking like over 20 hours a week would be unmanageable for me. And mm -hmm. if that's a conflict, then um, that would probably be a make or break. Um, yeah. The game changer, so to speak. Yeah. Can I say something? Yeah. Go ahead. I don't think that I have had a zoning person in here that's worked over 20 hours a week. Okay. That's good to yeah. know. Unless it was behind the scenes stuff. Like, like you make visits or, or something oh, okay. like that. Yeah. Off, yes, offsite. Okay. okay. And what is the expectation for time spent in the office uh, versus remote work? Or if there is one. What's the what's the temporary? What were they doing? Who's like? She was here. This is Claire. At least this Claire. Is Claire. Yep. Um, like nine thirty to. She stay and wrap things up by probably before one, mm -hmm. and then work remotely on Fridays. And if anything came in, I just scan it to her. Okay. How many days a week? She was just coming in on one day. Oh so wow! Physically here. 
working remote on Fridays. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm hoping to, uh, I'm going to reach out to Claire and JD tomorrow. I wanted to see how this went before chatting with them just to. And Claire was very willing to help train somebody. Well, I, um, that's great to know. That is really great to know. And she's good. So I had to work with her with the planning commission. So. Okay. Do you have some other questions? Or? Well, I, mean, I, think I was waiting to see if anyone else had questions too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, uh, is, is there a computer or phone supplied? Computer yes. on that back wall. Okay. Um, the desktop, no laptop? Just de yes. Okay. No, just desktop. Okay, is there any consideration for a laptop for remote work? Or, or what That's were people previously doing? Yeah. That's a good question. That is, yeah. I think that's something that we could certainly talk about. Yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. Doesn't yeah. seem unreasonable. Yeah, like this, no, mm -hmm. this, the way things are now, yeah. so much work. How old is that? That computer? I think it might be one of the next ones to be updated. Okay. <clears throat> and then, um, do you have mostly electronic file organization here, or are things more manual? Okay. Do you have um, a a zoning um, software program that is used here, or, or any way to uh, track? I think it's through Nemric. Nemric. Okay. Is it right, Dave? Nemric, right? Can you hear me? I don't think you can. I think he's not put it on you. No, he's he he's frozen. He's frozen. He's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. Wait, here. Yeah, you you can hear us, David. Oh, you're asking me? Oh, <laughs> no, go ahead. Uh, uh, I didn't know you were talking to me. So, yeah, no, I don't know anything about it. Okay, that's all right. I just talked sure about you guys. For sure. that yeah, I'm pretty sure it's there. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's all the questions I have. Okay. Now, you said that you would want to talk with Claire and JD more before would. you would have accepted. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But certainly by the end of the week, I mean, assuming. I'm sure I can get a hold of them pretty quickly. JB's really receptive. He was very excited that I was applying for this. Yeah. Um, JB has worked well for us. Yeah. 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 yeah, and he used to work as the A4 based in as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've, um, yeah. since we don't meet for another two weeks, <clears throat> it would be good if we could get this moving. So I'm going to make the motion that we offer the uh, and so administrator uh, job to Karen uh, Souther. Souther. Okay. Um, effective, I believe it's July 11th. Is that a Monday? Uh, it's a, who's that? Is that, is that clear? That's the early state I could start with. Yes, it is it's a Monday. Monday. It's a Monday. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it is a Monday. And um, yeah, so that's that's the motion. And then you can just give us the answer. Se uh, second on that. Second. Any more discussion? Um, at um, thirty-three dollars an hour, with a review in six months starting. Everybody okay with that? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you, and we look forward to your response. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you're going to check with those, you know, chat with those yeah. guys. Then. Yeah, in the next couple of days. Yeah. And I'll let you guys know by Friday. Great. Is that good? Great. Great. All right. Have a nice rest of your evening. Okay. Everyone. Same to you. Thanks, Thanks for coming in. Thanks. Thanks, Chuck.
Where's your, where's your um, animal control officer, Cap? You see, I left that one at home today. Okay. I was throwing them all in the car and I must have missed right. one. So, what do you think? So, I. The uh, ordinance is pretty outdated. It is. So, I, what I did is I went on VLCG's website, got you know their, their template version, obviously made a few adjustments because they had some pretty outrageous numbers for you know, the first, second, and third offense fine. And I brought those down a little bit, but still moving into the 21st century with the with the fines. And what this new ordinance would effectively help us do as well is if we chose to go through the state, we could get uh, ordinance ticket books and then actually properly ticket people and then the, the state of Vermont Judicial Bureau would take care of whether or not the payment was received and, and further action if needed on that. And that was the, the big driving factor because we've had a few people that are, you know, multiple offenders. And I think that it's a, it's a good ordinance to, to adopt in town. Stephen, is, is there any way, like, a, a new resident comes to more town and they have a bad dog, do you get any notice or is there any? There isn't any program that I've I've heard of for that, which I'm sure that you know some places probably do have something like that, different counties and in bigger states. But that's certainly something that would be good to know. But it's nothing that has been built mm -hmm. up in Vermont at all. So what would be the next procedure process? Looking for the select board to. I'm looking for the select board to, um, you know, put their grace on. I believe that it has to go to uh, public hearing I'm for sure. Norman's change, yeah. and then you guys can can vote on it. But I certainly, you know, I, I sent the draft <coughs> off to you guys in case there was a change that you guys saw or thought needed to be made. But overall, you know, when I. I proofread it a couple times, and it seemed to make sense to me. Okay. I'm just hoping that you guys will do the next step, and we can get a you know public meeting for it, and mm -hmm. we get the, okay. the change to happen. So we just we got to figure out the ordinance procedure. Right? Yeah, I think that you have to hold a, a public, public hearing. Public here. yeah. yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> can that just be at a select board meeting type of thing? Yeah. 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 yeah as long as it's a part of it. Part of the yeah. 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 <clears throat> okay. And that was that was basically it. I just wanted to get it, you know, moving forward. So hopefully we'll have something to go off from. It's been quiet for a couple weeks now. So we've only had one one incident in the last two weeks. So it's, it's been good. Oh, that is good. Yeah. I'd like to go a month without anything, but I yeah, just don't see it happening. Are the, is it a lot of repetition, same dogs? Um, it'll be the same dogs often, but then you'll get an out of left field one where somebody's, you know, dog just, you know, got out of their kennel or something on a fluke and, you know, went down the road. But a lot of it is a one singular repeat offender. I was doing the count. I've gotten one of the dogs 18 times since I took over just over a year ago. And how does the owner feel about that? Doesn't, oh, I just looked away for a minute, or oh, somebody's opening my door when I'm not home. Or, there's, I've heard every excuse. I'm pretty sick of the excuses, to be honest. Even with that current ordinance, so isn't there a penalty for repeat offenders? There is, um, and so we were at almost a thousand dollars owed. Yeah. Roy's uh, Valley Animal Hospital didn't want to take those animals anymore because he's more of a place for animals that we don't know who the owner is. And I had no place to bring them, so I had to bring them back to the owner. And the owner never, never paid, and then. Tom Jeanette, the constable and I 
we you know tried working out a plan with him to build a kennel and, and get him under control, and that seemed to work for a while. And then this spring, it started back up again. Is it one or two dogs? It's two. It was three. He knew he couldn't take care of three, so he got rid of one. And so there's just two dogs, but they still get out often enough that I know them by name and they know me by name. <laughs> they bark at me every time and you know jump right in my truck and all money every time it never fails. Hmm. So it's just you know it's, I love dogs, but I don't love seeing the same dogs over and over again. I'm just hoping we can we can get somewhere forward on it so that the finds are a little bit more real if you know. Yeah. As far as they're, they're, they're good dogs. Oh, they're, they're great, they're great they're, dogs. But it's just, they, they sooner great. or later, sooner or later, one's going to get hit. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. I've picked them up a couple times by people that <clears throat> have almost hit them in the yeah. road and stopped and grabbed them. Yeah. But I feel like this is the, the next step forward. Yeah. Just okay. get the audience and that ordinance yeah. changed and then and then get, talk to the state, the state. get, get yeah. the, the ordinance ticket book. Because then once you issue an ordinance ticket, it goes just like if you would be to get a speeding ticket to the Judicial Bureau. And then, you know, they take care of they making sure it gets paid. And if yeah. it doesn't, then they can, that's when things can start being, you know, levied or, or garnish wages or things like that. Yeah, I think that, that's, that'll that. help get it real to right. the people who are going to repeat offend. I mean, that one time that one person has a lost dog is, you know, it, kind of what it is. Things do happen. We've all, I feel like, had a dog get away and, and lost one for a short time. But it's the repeat offenders that I think are the big problems. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I would say, Sasha, just um, get, see if Tom has any input. <clears throat> but um, we should get on that as soon as possible. And have the hearing scheduled as soon as we can. Okay. Very good. Ruff, Thank ruff. you. Thanks, Devin. Ruff, ruff. Ruff, ruff. So, Dick is due at 7, and Martin's already here. <clears throat> Um, but let's, let's just uh, go on to reports and communications, and then we'll go as soon as Dick is here, we'll deal with that. <clears throat> so, Ray, start with you. Well, I'll, I'm going to put off the class <laughs> four stuff. We'll talk about that in our old business. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yep. So, um, as you heard earlier, the uh, our RAP committee uh, met last week and has recommended, it's working on several things, uh, but right now they recommended to the select board that we go forward with the CB fiber, uh, $50,000. The rest of the items are still being discussed and will be discussed probably for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I did add, and I was going to tell Martin that, uh, you know, we talked about um, great are updating, getting more gravels, surfacing done. But we also talked about uh, <clears throat> possibly getting some um, signs with the uh, flashing um, indicator on it, the speed indicator on them. Uh, maybe get some of those signs, which are not cheap, they're near $5,000 a piece as well. But, uh, and maybe look at some of our guardrails and see if there's areas that we need guardrail that we can uh, somehow get covered under the uh, IRAP money. Uh, but um, yeah, uh, those are some of the things. Um, and you know, we talked about the uh, the sewer, uh, the municipal sewer. Right now, uh, the committee is going to the sewer committee is going to interview the two engineers, Otter Creek and Du Bois and King. I think the last week of the month, and uh, after that interview, they'll recommend to the board uh, which engineer to go forward with on that. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, that's about it. The, 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 the whole class war thing, which is a whole. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else besides that? That's it. Okay. Kelly. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. Okay. Uh, um, no, I guess I'll just I'll be in new business or old business with some stuff. I okay. Guess. All right. And um, the only thing I have is um, I did get an email from Deborah Carroll, um, and uh, regarding the, this new uh, the new law uh, 180 S 181. And um, and the, the main the main reason she was submitting that to me was because of the issues we have that Dick Valentinetti is going to be discussing with us. And then also, um, what's also interesting there um, that Tom and I are really excited about is that it sounds like you can put traffic calming device devices on our roads. So that would that would really be good too. And, uh, but we can talk more about that when we talk about, in the old business, when we talk about, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the roads and the, uh, the sign quotes that we've gotten and so on as well. <clears throat> and speaking of, the mayor. speaking of, and we'll go back since Dick is here now. Hello, Dick. Hi. <clears throat> And you're actually up, because we're running a little bit early in here. here so. <clears throat> Hello, Dick. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 <clears throat> no, it's just like everybody else. It's been a boring three years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we, at least we have Rhode Island to walk on or places like that. So get my exercise, but that's about it. Yeah. All right, so um, have an update for us on our neighbor here. Yeah. Well, I'll give you the good news first. Um, Frank, is the property at the end of the street, uh, he is not going to rent it like uh, a letter we sent him. Uh, he is planning to sell the property and not rent it. So, from that point of view, that may be out of our hair, although um, I don't know if we can do something to put a stipulation in that the property can't be used as a rental property until the water issue is right. determined. I mean, I think that would be the best way in the first place. Right, yeah. Now, ah. it's a longer story when we get to uh, 1013 hundred feet. Um, I'm assuming you've all had a, a, seen the letter that was sent out yes. that I can't see now. Uh, basically, um, they did a lot of the simple things uh, quickly, uh, such as uh, the the storage system uh, was corrected. Uh, the broken pipe was fixed, and they the, uh, infect, uh, disinfected the uh, the bottom of the cellar and everything. Uh, when I went there, the cellar stairs were so steep that uh, I indicated that uh, it should be off limits to uh, the the renters, and and basically they locked up that door. Mm -hmm. um, the fire extinguishers and the smoke alarms and everything were all updated. Um, 
partly because of our order and the fact that the uh, fire marshal did a inspection and he's a little more enforcement minded. And so all of those things were, were done immediately. Um, the low water pressure seems to be solved. Uh, it, they have the, the water pressure now. And um, apparently the gas lines were cleaned out and so everybody is getting more water. So those are the things that they did. Um, at the request of the fire marshal's office, um, the two uh, units on the uh, second floor, uh, because the windows were so small or they didn't have access, uh, they weren't allowed to use those rooms for, for uh, bedrooms. Uh, the fire marshal also indicated that the stairs uh, going up to the second floor were too steep and that they had to be replaced. Uh, what I'm hearing from Jason, who is um, who's Frank's um, maintenance person, is that they plan to block those off completely and put up new stairways on the outside of the back of the building. But, um, is, is that okay with the fire marshal? Because of the fire marshal, although it, it also uh, complies with the health regulations okay. because of the <coughs> steepness in the stairs. Mm -hmm. um, uh, now, things that still have to be done. Uh, the, the, the place is just badly insulated, uh, although when Frank redid it after the flood, I think he did, he did some fair insulation on the walls. But when I was there, all the baseboard in, in both of the units that I went through, you could feel the cold air coming through. Uh, so uh, I requested that they do something as far as doing better insulation uh, on, the, uh, on the baseboards. Um, in one unit, the uh, pipes froze uh, three times during the winter. Uh, and the other big thing is uh, there's a leak coming from uh, the second floor down to the first floor unit, uh, unit five to unit six, which is the bottom floor. Um, you can see where the water has hit the tile and everything else. But, uh, but uh, basically, uh, unit five just got vacated. And the answer I got from, from uh, Frank's person is, well, there's no leak now because uh, because nobody's living there. Uh, you know, I still, he refuses to uh, take down the tile to look to find out if there's mold there, as well as determine where the leak is coming from. Mm. Uh, so that's one that, uh, that I'm, I'm really concerned about. And uh, so, and, and the other thing is, on the construction of the stairs, I keep asking for some type of schedule. Uh, and I just get no answer, we'll do it when we do it, is about the best answer I can get from it. And, um, you know, we've asked for progress reports in the past, and they never show up. Um, there's a mouse problem also. We all have a mouse problem in our house right now, probably. 
But uh, what's happened now is, is that uh, because the uh, Unit 5 is, is not occupied, there's uh, mouse droppings all over the place, mm -hmm. uh, indicating that they're, you know, it's all through the building. Yeah. Um, I mean, it needs to do something about that. I, you know, again, I don't think it's the biggest problem in the world, but it's just another one that kind of comes up with everything else in terms of lack of maintenance. Uh, Uh, there needs, on number six unit, the one down for that needs to put, put a railing around the uh, porch that's out there. Uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, my letter requested that they pick up the construction debris and all the other crap that's in the uh, yard and that, that I couldn't see during the winter time because of the snow. Um, it's, it's all over the place now. Uh, it does pose a uh, risk to health and safety. Um, uh, the roof leaks. Uh, it's not big leaks, but uh, it, you can see where uh, there's uh, some stain from leaks both in the hallway as well as in one of the units. Uh, and I also asked for tight-fitting doors. Uh, right now, the doors that are on the, at least the two units upstairs, is just, it's just a regular old door from 1920 with a, with a latch, iron latch. There's no locks on the doors or anything else. And again, a lot of the, uh, uh, wind coming in from uh, the outside is coming through those doors. Uh, um, so um, there, there are some issues with the tenants. The tenants uh, have started a probably a, a, a not so legal um, escrow account. Uh, three or four of them have, and uh, uh, I, I, I wish we had a social officer for the town so that we could have some discussion about some of those things too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't. I, I, I just don't know enough about some of the social aspects. I mean, uh, one person in there, um, and I don't understand this arrangement, but I'm not a landlord. Um, Frank has the master account for the gas from uh, the propane that's delivered. But the individual tenants need to pay the individual bills. Um, one woman couldn't pay her bill two and a half or three years ago. And so they shut her off. Um, she's been eating her apartment with electric eaters. With, uh, I'm sure she probably qualifies for some type of uh, uh, fuel assistance or something, but uh, apparently she can't get her gas turned back on. Uh, and again, I don't know enough about some of those issues. Um, she uh, just recently also. Um, as she was going into her unit, uh, her her leg fell through the porch. Right, right, right. Uh, her what? Her leg fell right. through the porch. Uh, <clears throat> I said put a bullet over it. Uh, so that's kind of where we are. Uh, Sasha has sent uh, at my urging a request for progress reports. We didn't get any, any lied to us, they sent them, we emailed them. Uh, we all searched our, our junk files and everything else. Um, about a month and a half ago, uh, I met with uh, Jason, his uh, 
is a man uh, that takes care of the problems. And I said, look, uh, since you're having so many problems with the tenants, I'd be happy to at least witness if you need somebody there as you do a repair or you look at some of these issues. Um, he said yes, and I never heard that from him again. So that, that's about where we are on this whole thing. Um, I keep asking for some progress reports in writing. I, I did this past weekend when I met with Jason again. Uh, but I just don't get anything, and I don't get anything with dates. That's the thing that worries me the most. Uh, you know, I, I've had a past life in enforcement. And, um, you know, the regulations and the laws are there to get compliance on enforcement. And so you want to try to do whatever you can to, uh, uh, to, to get that compliance. And it just doesn't seem like it's happening. Be happy to answer any questions. Or? Well, you start with the good news that he was no longer going to be renting, but wanted to sell it. But I mean, bottom line is that place may not sell. Certainly, it'll take probably a long time to sell. I, I, I mean, and so, what do we do in the meantime? We've, we've got to, we've got to. He's got to fix the problems. Well, the the, the big problem among other things. But the, the huge problem is, is, the, uh, is the water supply system. I mean, it's a, it's a spring-fed cistern. Uh, it, you know, maybe somebody who was really careful and owned the property could run it. But, um, you know, I've had two tenants now that uh, ended up where they ran out of water. And this was before we ended up with uh, any drought conditions or anything else. So I don't know what's happening over there at all. But that's the biggest problem, yeah. I think, over there. There's, there's, there's a bunch of other things. There's, there's bad insulation. Uh, you know, they have, they have the, uh, uh, the, the sliding doors, which are just are terrible. I mean, somebody that's going to take over that property if they bought it is going to have to put it in a lot. But they're not going to rent it. He's not going to rent it anymore. So, yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah, but he's got existing tenants in there. Oh no, no, they, no, no. they moved out. They, he, he claimed that he claimed that they were squatters. Um, I didn't get into that, uh, but uh, it's with, with, now. With, with a court order, he got them out of there about a week ago. They've cleaned up the place. Oh, okay. And everything else. No, there's nobody <clears> living there. So he's not going to rent it, right? He's not going to rent it. That's what he's saying. Well, and, and we sent him a letter right. that he, he could rent it. rent it unless he could show no, that he had a good water supply. Right. So, um, okay. So, well, that's all. Let me make sure I'm clear. The, the, the building that's being rented is the one almost across the road. Yeah. Well, right. and, and, and the one at the end of the road is no longer being rented. It's on it, her. Oh, yeah. Well, that, yeah. Now, well, that, that's, well, that's, that's what Ray is asking. Well, no, he's, he's asking. You know, the apartment's across the road. Yeah, he's just getting. You know. and, and, and the thing is, uh, the apartments across the road are, are fairly nice. Um, you know, they, they did a lot of work after the flood and everything, and they're fairly light, nice. The problem is, it just doesn't keep them up. Well, then they're not nice, aren't they? Well, yeah. <laughs> they're not, uh, yeah, they but uh, they have all kinds of small problems. Yes, yeah, it certainly sounds like it. Lack of maintenance. Um, so, with the new, the new, isn't there a new law that we can step select board can take more action now? Well, well the select board, uh, acting as the board of health, can take a lot of action, um, but. I just, that's why I, I wanted to, uh, I, I wanted to keep the board informed and if we need to, I've talked to Ron Shims about, uh, about doing another health order and then 
uh, going to the courts to uh, try to get some enforcement. Ma mainly in terms of trying to get some dates in terms of when things are done. But, um, and, and, and the other thing is, since he's in a contest with, uh, uh, with the tenants there, he doesn't want to do, he, he and Jason don't want to do anything. And so, and the, the renters don't want to pay him unless they mm -hmm. see the money going into some improvements in the house. And I, I, again, I don't, you know, I, I'm not in the middle of that, but, um, I mean, again, I can talk to Ron and try to come up with a, a list of things that we didn't need to do that. Yeah, I would, I would definitely say that. Everybody in agreement with that? But, uh, it's tough. I mean, people need places to live. Yeah. And I don't know, um, you know, um, he asked me where I got my R factors from. I mean, maybe you should be doing a, an energy audit on the place. Uh, I mean, they're, they're usually free or next to free. Um, and, and um, you know, the, the legislature and their wisdom passed the bill that uh, puts a lot of money to Land wants to upgrade apartments, maybe. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Yeah, start with I mean, I, I just, as I said, I wish we had a social officer uh, like the old days. So some of these other issues, such as the woman that has to use space heaters to eat, eat her apartment uh, and try to find some relief. I'll put something together uh, and talk to Ron about coming up with the water and try yeah. to get uh, try to get dates on. Yeah, and I I let him know the, the urgency of this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. Right on time, road department update, Martin, and probably Stefan. <clears throat> Good evening. Nice job on road today. Thank you. A little dry, but. Uh, so, yeah, I've, the biggest thing I'm here for is um, just basically my overall budget is. Uh, Obviously, set the budget in October, basically, to get ready for January 1st. Um, so I'm going off of those numbers. Uh, you know, things have changed drastically, as I'm sure everybody's aware. Uh, fuel costs um, being one of them. Um, but culverts have doubled from last summer to this year. They I mean, literally have doubled in price. Um, and that's across the board. It's not just one vendor. That's everybody. How about availability? Have you had a hard time uh, doing it? So, uh, so far I only placed one order um, and they had everything that was in stock. Is that through Johnson? Uh, yeah, it was through Johnson, yes. Johnson Hardware. Um, and he said that his availability was good. They yeah. weren't seeing a shortage. I guess there is a shortage on some of this smaller pipe, the SDR 35, the, you know, the 6, the 4, 6, 12 inch pipe. I yes. Guess shortages on that, but that's not something that we use a ton of, so I'm um, able to get the um, pipe, but it's obviously my budget's not going very far since it doubled. Um, the sand, um, where we get our sand from Farron's, they had a dollar fifty bump per yard across the board that she set in May. Uh, when we started for this year. So that, that's a total, even on buying just the sand alone, that's a $7,500 hike in budget. Um, so that's- What's that, what's that put it at now, 11 or? Uh, the, yes, I think she, I think it is 11 yard now. So from the price that they give us? Yes, from last year to this year, so. Then they have a, they have a clause that they yeah, can, yeah, yeah, 
have said in my budget on last year's numbers, and like in October. Yeah, they gave um, us and everything was pretty still ordinary, nothing yeah. ridiculous. Then kind of January, things started getting a little crazy, and then um, so she set her. But I did reach out to her in the fall, and she said at most she thought that she would go up at least 50 cents, but she wasn't sure. Which is, which is normal. Yeah, which is a, a normal height, but $1.50. Uh, we just uh, got some material from uh, the Bruso, old Brusso's pit, and they, the June 1st they set new pricing on theirs at, uh, what did you say, 16? 16.40. a yard, I want to say it was. That's about a dollar. Six, yeah, about a dollar fifty jump. Um, so their gravel, their very gravel. Also, a dollar fifty. I think they took fourteen now or thirteen. Um, so considering the the distance to Barrens now, it's probably becoming more evident that they may be using plant mix or something closer. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's um, it's still cheaper than. The product that we may end up, but I fully expect that Northeast will also have a price hike here at some point. But uh, Northeast, which is in a very nice haul out of granite quarries, but yeah. they make up manufactured sand, which uh, Berlin uses now. But the price difference was still um, a big enough jump that yeah. we really couldn't afford to jump to that. But any more of an increase than we definitely, I would definitely consider moving to a um, product that I, I would much prefer on the roads anyways. Um, it would be like a quarter to half inch um, plant mix basically, yeah. one on the roads instead of a round stone sand that mm -hmm. just ends up in the ditches. And yeah. So, um, so just, Things like that, so we're probably going to, in an attempt to stay as close to budget as possible, we'll probably uh, back off on some projects related to culverts, um, stuff like that. We have a decent uh, municipal roads general permit grant that we're doing on the mountain road. Um, that will still take place, but we'll be reimbursed for a majority of that uh, work that gets done. Um, another thing, uh, mowing roadsides, the <coughs> rental mower went up $1,500 for a week rental. It was, uh, I didn't rent it. Um, our old contractor, Alan Audet, that had been doing the first pass, he canceled on us um, late um, this year, so I was kind of left scrambling to figure out what I was going to do. So the next logical thing was he either rent the boom more for two weeks, which when I called, got a hold of them, that was out because that would throw my budget way off, you know, mm -hmm. $3,000 more. Uh, so I did call around the, uh, another um, guy that mows for Berlin that could do it. Um, the other option is Eric Howes is willing to purchase a mower um, and do the mowing. And that would be the route that I would prefer to go. Um, it obviously, you know, does work for the town already. Mm -hmm. um, and I've spoken to him, and he's ready to pull the trigger on renting or on buying a, not a boom mower, but a um, just a regular side mount mower to do the roadsides, which we could get by with for a year. But we're going to have to come up with a strategy going forward. Fairfield's not even going to rent their boom mowers; they're getting out of it. So um, part of the reason I didn't rent the boom mower from them as they said if they were able to sell the machine that they would sell the machine and not honor the rental dates so literally could be counting on getting a rental unit in july or august yeah. they sell the machine and basically they're That's saying it. here you're not getting the machine 
the only other place that I'm aware of that rents them is uh, Pete's. And I called them and they're booked straight through to the fall. Mm -hmm. So if Eric <coughs> Howells gets a machine, uh, any idea, would he charge us by the hour or would it be a Correct, six? yes. Uh, he said uh, 75 an hour, which is uh, comparable to what Alan was charging okay. us. I think he was 65 an hour, but that was last year's pricing before fuel went up. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a very fair price. Sounds like it. And then we can just basically hire him till the money is gone in that budget and he'll, you know, and then we have to come up with a plan, I guess, going forward. Well, I think, you know, we should consider maybe a multi-year contract with him. It might yeah. work out better for him. Right. And for us. Yeah. At a fixed rate or something, yeah. you know. We probably have to put it out for bid, bid. and then just have a bid on it and see where it came out. But yeah. It seems like uh, at this point, rug pull is not going to be an option uh, going forward. So no. we need to we need to get yeah. a contractor on board that we can count on. Exactly. And uh, Alan, well, that wouldn't be for this year though. No, you're going going forward, forward, right? Yes, yeah. right. We'll do it by the hour this year, then. Right. Yeah. And then yeah. Right. Push yeah. Out bid. I agree. I think that's the best <coughs> route to take. The, the only downside is we definitely need to either hire somebody with a boom or going forward. I'm okay with it for a year, okay. maybe two, but we definitely need a boom or to be able to get behind the guardrails, to get mm -hmm. across that bank, right. um, to keep the brush down. So. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not brush, all brush that they cut. No. He did a mess on my property last year. Yeah. Uh, my, yeah, my, uh, where, where we bore our horns. Yeah. Took down some nice butternuts that were coming coming along. Yeah. I mean, I know they'll eventually die, but right. you know, yeah. anyway. It would have been nice to know that he was planning on doing that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if, I mean, I'll be honest, if it's in the ditch or in the ditch line, I prefer it to be cut. I mean, yeah. from a road standpoint, maybe not from a tree standpoint, but from you know, right. a no, road maintenance yeah. standpoint. I understand. But, but I, I think that landowners should know. Yeah, yeah, with well, that, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> anything that's in the right of way, definitely. If you, you know, consider a prize or something that you, you definitely want to reach yeah. out to us prior to and maybe a public service announcement or right. get some ribbon on it or something because it's, I've run the more, it's very difficult to tell what is what yeah. as you're running it. Yeah. So sometimes you don't know when they're coming too. So correct, like, yeah. correct. There'd have to be maybe some way of letting people know. Yeah. It's, I think sometimes think this is, you know, when they, they go up like that, Yes. And get up higher and then yes. take some branches off some trees that might not really need it to go or something. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I've done exactly what you're saying and it's not pretty, it's yeah. not, um, but I can tell you it's a lot um, more time effective than a chainsaw and a pole saw. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. definitely not pretty, I yeah. realize yeah. that. It's you know, quite the machine, yeah, right. definitely. I have my play put in on this. This subject. Um, <laughs> with all the invasive species that we're getting, you know, the, the Japanese knotweed, the poison parson, it might not be a bad idea to consider buying a roadside mower, because then we can hit it more than that that once a year to keep those invasives down. It's a big investment for the town. I know it's a new piece of equipment, you know, it's generally a one purpose piece of equipment, but it would help to keep those invasives down. Yeah. It's about $150,000, I, I priced them in the So, a lot of towns have gone that route, um, and I'm definitely not opposed to it. Um, it would be great to have that piece of equipment, um, more or less to use when you want it, when you have the time to use it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you've got poison parsnip, um, Howells Road up there, you could knock that down before it bloomed. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, Japanese knotweed, obviously you can mow it and you can watch that grow, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm definitely not opposed to it, I just, it's, it's tough. We, it depends on what you can get per year for um, contractors. Right. Versus, if you're even find someone, too. True. No, we should definitely keep that in mind for the future anyway. But everybody okay with that up doing it this year? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, as far as uh, no, over budget, I'm, I'm sure that uh, we can come up with some of the ERAP money to help cover those over, not in, the over budget items. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, there's no way we could have anticipated, you know, the kind of increases yeah, that we're seeing, you know, 15% uh, increase in, in fuel and things like that. I mean, yeah, I mean, we're I'm already in basically. Scrounge mode, you know, just trying to yeah. do what will have to be done. Um, and, I, and I would encourage you to do what has to be done and, and not put off right. anything because of the money, because we'll find the money. If, you know, I'm a true believer that if we put it out, oh, yeah, it's I not going to get any better. Yeah. It's going to be twice as worse next year. If it needs to be done and we see it, it will, it will have to get done because, it, as we all know, after the fact, it's a lot more expensive than yeah. fixing it beforehand. Um, just, it, it's, yeah, it's just been, mm. what's, what's the, uh, what's the status as far as the, uh, the river road by Scribner's, have, have we had um, a contract on that? Or? Uh, I don't know if we've actually received the grant yet, Okay. so we're waiting on that, but I have, um, started pulling the trigger on getting updated pricing on that as well, because the pricing that I had to apply for the grant was lack was yeah. 2020, I think, 2021. Right. So I fully expected those pricing, that pricing to be through the roof. And surprisingly, what I'm seeing right now, it's not that big of a jump, like 20 grand. Yeah, so, so about 15 to 20% increase? Yeah, probably right around there. Hopefully, um, hopefully the state will come through. Then. Hopefully we get the grant and then we can just we'll pull the trigger on. Um, like I said, I've gotten some basically budgetary pricing just to find out where we're going to be um, for that. But um, you know, we'll just get a couple, you know, three companies to bid. And, yeah, we can find them. Yeah, that, that are willing. So far, Pike has said they can do it. And Top coat, fresh coat. Fresh coat. Um, reached out to me looking for work, and I had them look at it, and they um, got back with the price too. So, so hopefully, um, well, that product. Doing, just uh, who's doing the work on Route Two? Is that Hutchins going to be paving that? Just wondering if they're going to be in the area. Yeah, I would don't know. know who that I think is. Hutchins has got that is contract. That? Or do a loop too, and it might might work out. Uh, reach out to them and see if they're going to be in the area. <clears throat> right. Our apps they can give us some sort of deal. Yeah. So yeah. So um, I will mention. So Eugene Grantfield, who we awarded the sand bid to, um, has come down and said that he needs more money to complete that contract. And I told him that I would bring it up to the select board, but. At this point, I think if he, he's asking for a dollar more per yard, and that's definitely outside the realm of what I'm willing to, to work with. Um, he hasn't stopped hauling, so uh, at this point, I think we just let him either haul it for what he agreed to or, or, stop. or cease hauling. It would be my, I think, the best way to handle it. I mean, we get anything over six, six and a quarter, we'd probably haul it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. Okay. I just, I told them I'd run it by the board, but yeah, I'm not okay. in agreement with it. Everybody? Okay with it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That he won't haul it anymore? No, no, no. If that's what he chooses to do, yeah, if he doesn't get any more money, but he, he agreed, you know. He won't choose. Yeah, he signed the contract, yeah. and 
if he doesn't want to finish it, then that's up to him. But um, <clears throat> because, and then just going back to the budget, usually the gravel budget is where I can, you know, save from if I need to make up on overages on other places. And of course, after the mud season we had, you know, we spent some money on on treating mud. So yeah. Mm. That money may not be there to, you know, kind of steep that rock from. Uh, and I think that's the only. And then, so, uh, Martin, do you think number wise, are you 10% over budget or any idea at this point? I've worked with Sasha and get, she sent me an updated budget report and maybe three weeks ago, and yeah. it's, yeah, probably 10%. Um, I can get the latest round of um, slips and stuff. That's okay. kind of, ooh, that like I said, that, also, you know. that culvert order, that's a big chunk. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, just so far. Right. So, like I said, just with her dollar fifty bump, we're going to be um, seventy five hundred dollars on the sand alone. We'll be over budget just from last year. Um, I I did bump it three thousand more, so that will be forty five hundred dollars. But then we're paying we're paying more for trucking. Um, seven basically seventy five cents more a yard for, for trucking, so we're back to. We'll be over anyways. We look at it, and I'm not not willing to not put up, you know, five thousand yards because we just seem to blow through it with their rain events we get in the winter. Mm -hmm. We've tried so, that before. Yeah, yeah. We're paying the price for it. Yeah, we're definitely paying in the spring. Um, what other thing I had was the shop walking around the shop the other day and the trim boards on the back peak have um, come off. There's two trim boards um, and it's going to be an extremely tall ladder to get to it. Um, I don't know if we have a contractor that we use for that sort of thing or this is in the back, in the back peak. Can you get to it with a uh, high lift? Nope. It has to be a ladder. I, I'm not saying that I, could, that we couldn't repair it, um, but we'd obviously have to rent a ladder and figure out how we build how, a ladder. How big a ladder you use? We'd have to be at least a 40 footer. I don't know. Uh, we have, we have a 35 footer at the fire department. I don't think it would reach uh, comfortably I that high. I have a 40. You do? Yeah. We could try that. Yeah, yeah, try that because I can't, I can't handle it myself. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 that's a big one. <laughs> you won't find me up to the fire Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what the smartest contractor is, yeah. but you can find somebody local to do it. Right, okay. So we're going to look and see if we can figure out what, it, what the extent is. Well, maybe we can find a contractor and supply the ladder. Yeah. That might be it. Yeah. I don't know Take if that's one. something that Joe Beverly does or not. Right, I could ask him. I see him, but he's not. I'm not yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. He's, he's not going to go a lot for it. We might have a person. Yeah, yeah I probably, yeah. And then, uh, we still have the condensation thing to work on. But yeah. Well, somehow. To, to try to, I know, but just to get, we took a knockdown down we're trying to get the right person there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think we gotta just go with it. Dick kind of jogged my mind about uh, Hurdle Road, the cedar hedges. They are on hurdle or over out of control again, so we need to address those. Um, I'm sure if I go in and start packing, it's going to be an ordeal, so maybe we can reach out to Frank first and let him know we need to be trimmed back. More than willing to do it, I just need to know it's not going to be a fiasco. Everything is, you want to cut us in the right away. It is. Oh, yeah. All that just in the top. Yeah, the whole hedge is in the right away. Mm. Is that where the tree warden falls in? Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. 
<laughs> Actually, Eric is the ultimate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. I think he'd probably tell us to get out of the way. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, It is I, even a safety issue. Like, even, no, I know. I know. Even a car trying to get out of there is, I mean, is so bad. There wasn't that much trimming done last time either. I mean, no. not enough. No, no not even. He, and we need to cut some, and we thought it would be better, but as we, I mean, cedars grow super fast, anyways. Especially right. when you prune them, you trim right. them, they grow really fast. So I suppose I can get reach out, reach just, out to. Um, and the only other big issue I have is the class four um, road, you know, issues that we right. have to go on. Right, I guess. Yeah, you might as well talk about that now, so, under old business. Uh, Denise, I assume that's what you're waiting for, too? Yes, okay. that, yeah, I just want to do what's happening with that. Thanks. Okay, great. Okay. I just had one more question, Mark. Yeah. We had talked uh, last year about uh, some sort of compactor to use after grading. Yes, well, we could tell, yeah. yeah, we could tell with the grader. Yeah. Um, where do we stand on that? Uh, we were going to attempt to build our own drum roller, like yeah. a lot of towns use. Um, but I think the I think we, or some on the board was like, well, maybe we should hold out for a walk and roll, which yeah. are the pneumatic tires, which get into every crevice, but they're extremely expensive. I think we could be into a drum roller for, well, old pricing, under 10000 uh, new pricing, I guess I'd have to reprice it. Um, good to see, but um, we have some really talented. Um, I still think it's a. I think it's a really good idea. It, it is. Uh, that, yeah, that one I did write it down to, but I skipped right over it. Uh, so on. Um, oh, on uh, 524, we all um, took part in a uh, greater class, if you will. Stu Johnson from the local roads came out to the shop and went over some things with us in the classroom setting and then we all went to the river road and took turns grading a section of road while he followed us and gave us feedback on that. It was really informative. Um, Good. Definitely a great, you know, you know instruction. Um, and all four of us were you know, took a section of the road and did our own section of the road. Me? My hunt of the best, in case anybody yeah. needed to know. Oh, that was good. It did happen to be the flattest. I will yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so oh, one, one other quick thing. Butternut Hill sign. Is that going to oh, be a new yeah, one? I have it. Oh, you do it's have it? Okay, okay. Yeah, I believe it's in the shop, actually, at the shop. I believe it Because Ruth was willing to make one. Yeah. I said, well, let me check with you guys. Yeah. Okay. Well, that actually brings up a, an interesting road department A911 question. Um, as new roads are, are going up, and obviously the town is getting the sign and getting the sign post, and traditionally we've had, you know, what is it, $75 or something that the the people that are, you know, proposing the road pay, the prices of, of that stuff has gone up, you know, crazy as well. So we'll have to revisit that as we, you know, get new roads. Because I just issued a new road that was approved prior to me that's going to end up meeting a sign. And I don't know where the money is coming from or if we've even received any. I don't think we have. Yeah, definitely may want to find a new fee schedule um, for the signage portion yeah. of that just simply because... Um, you, it's typically right around 150 for your average sign with, with the insert, the post, and mm -hmm. the bracket to hold the sign and the sign. Yeah. It's right around $150. Okay. Um, All right. And they took that little sign northward, which is okay because a lot of times it says northward, people wouldn't yeah, see that at all, and they'd end up at my house. Yeah, they would say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was lawful, I think I've replaced six times oh, since I did. That's, that's, that is really ridiculous, yeah. Just be honest, they still have some very unique names, so. 
And trails, yeah. So um, I did spend some time the last week or so, and I actually met with Denise last Friday to review what I found out. And, and basically, uh, we have issued, like I said earlier, we have issued permits that should have been gone, should building permits that should have gone through the DRB did not go that way, and part of the DRB review which was important is the uh, access to their property. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly states that we're supposed to have 20 foot roads. The town plans gives a specific criteria it's supposed to be met. Uh, and so right now, uh, like I said, we have a building permit for Mike McCartney, Mike McCartney uh, for a house on Cobb Hill. Uh, but the house was built by George Wells. <laughs> and George Wells got a garage permit for that house. But again, these were both approved by the uh, zoning administrator when it's clear that any uh, development, no development, no development is permitted on lots that don't have class one, two, or three access without DRB review. So, uh, it, it's my feeling that um, the select board should contact Mr. Wells and tell him he has to get the right permit, the right building permit, which means going to the DRB. That's what needs to be done. I, if that's legal, I, I think that's what we got to do. Send him a letter, see if he's willing to reapply and comply with the zoning uh, regulations as they are now and see how that goes. Um, I think that's a start. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and as I said earlier, the whole building permit process, uh, it's all in the zoning administrator's signature, and they need to have some sort of review, uh, I believe, to make this right so we don't run into this problem again. Um, Cobb Hill is not the only road. Uh, Brownsville Road, it's going to be the same issue. You've got people up there that, that want to build. That road is probably worse than Cobb Hill. If there are places up there, the culvert's ready to jump out of the ground. It's very narrow. Uh, if we ever had to get an a, a, a emergency vehicle up there, there's no way at this point in the wintertime. I don't even know if you can do it in the summertime. <laughs> But I, yes, it could get there. Yes, it would do the job. I wouldn't like any bit of it. Yeah. Yeah. So again, these are these are two of the many, uh, uh, probably many issues that we have. Right. But these are two are really coming up that we really need to look at and be careful where uh, what we issue for permits. Well, you have the same on Lynch Hill too. And Lynch Hill. There's a camp up there. It's right in the middle of the chute. The chute is an ice skate in the winter. Yeah. But there's a camp up there. Yeah. That yeah, is planning to be lived well. in yeah. year round with no power, no water. Yeah. So, yeah, Lynch Hill is another one. So, these are all roads that are, we just need to be, pay a lot of attention to how we're issuing permits and curb cuts. Yeah. I'm even going as far as saying, when we issue a curb cut, we ought to issue a separate sheet, uh, conditions sheet on curb cuts in these class four roads or trails, specifically addressing what is required. So they know, even if they're not going to build anything right now, they know that they have to fix this road, that the town is not going to fix these roads. Well, even fixing the road is sort of not okay according to the town plan. They said like trails, they want to keep them trails, they don't want yeah. to upgrade them. You could, but it's a process to do it. Right. And it's an expense to our town and more burden on Martin here to be able to maintain if that became a class three road. Um, 
also uh, these um, legal trails are um, it's issues all over the town. So it's not just the ones we're currently working. On. Yes, so. I, I agree. I think uh, now that we have the new map, uh, we can you know we now know the right road names and hopefully. Well, I, I think we can do more going working. forward for the select board. We had this issue last time Tom Martin was here for a select board meeting that they were issuing a permit on Top Hill. Yeah. You know, you should you should be aware of your roads and your trails and your class four roads because when you look at a E911 uh, curb cut address, it basically tells you the mileage of how far up right. that that uh, distance is. And we ran into this issue and it was way down on Cobb Hill that needed a curb cut, and that's well within the reason of the class three road. Yeah. So, I mean, you should know how long your class three roads are and so on. So, regarding the two permits that were issued, do we need to, I mean, is it something that we have to get legal advice on, whether that- I that think we, we can send this letter to I the guy we do, basically evoking it? I, I think we should write a letter to the owner stating that the permit they have is, is not valid and, and see how they, they may say, okay, we'll just get another permit. Yeah. Or they may fight it, I don't know. The hard thing is, is I know one of those buildings is complete now. Right, it's not like, uh, I'm sure that a permit will be issued, but they need, they, even they if they have the wrong permit, there's still regulations here that have to be followed. It's just like a speed limit sign. You know, it, you just can't go 50 miles an hour because, well, they said I could drive on this road. You know, uh, they, it says that it's pretty clear in our zoning. You have to comply with this stuff. Right. So I think, you know, I think we have to write a letter to uh, Mr. Wells. Well, the other thing is I was never notified of the permit for the garage. Uh, sorry, this is Denise McCarty. I live on Cobb Hill. Um, I was notified of the first building, um, but I was I was never notified in writing for the second permit, which I'm assuming is separate and not the same. And if I'm wrong, somebody please correct me, but. No, there's two, there's two permits, one for the garage mm. and one for the house. The garage was just okay. issued in March, is that correct? Uh, uh, yeah, March 9th. That's correct. Okay, well, so the, um, the second permit, the one issued in March, I don't believe the zoning administrator or whoever Nobody notified any of the um, surrounding neighbors, like the land, the adjoining landowners, including myself, of that second permit. Um, there's, and so I was not notified of that. I saw a sign that there was, you know, that a permit had been issued or something, but I didn't know. And then I asked George and he said he was putting a driveway in. And then as time went on, I was like, what are you exactly doing? <laughs> That's more than a driveway. So um, I don't think that the process was followed for the second permit, um, it was followed. I, I, I agree. I, I don't think the process was followed for either either permit. Uh, so, uh, well, um, I'm sure it wasn't. But the second permit definitely wasn't followed, and that was under a different zoning administrator. So whoever has oversight to her work, um, you know, where is that oversight? <laughs> I got you. Well, yeah, yeah. Yep. 
That was issued as far as Mayor Rock. That was right there. Yeah, that yeah. was right there. Yep. Okay. Well, as far as notification to landowners by the person putting the permit in, um, and if the March permit was put in by George, the landowner, um, but didn't cite an actual location, that seems like it's also incomplete. So why wasn't that caught and questioned? Well, the, the garage permit has the physical location 911 address on it. Yeah, we just have the proper uh, delineation of number of roadway or legal trail. It only, it does not um, state anything as far as access. Uh, but usually it says uh, off Cobb Hill legal trail or Cobb Hill number six. So according to the Vermont E911 board. Well, that's different. That, right. But that's where the number was generated from. Yeah, but e one is not the official map, period. Right. It's just so, a number that, that everybody has chosen to go off. It is a 1760 Cobb Hill Road on the garage permit. Yep. It does not say... Number, of the, number on the building permit. But under wastewater permit, it, the state of Vermont got it correctly, and one of those permits does say six. It says uh, town okay. highway number six. Okay, I don't have the wastewater permit. The wastewater permit does have the right delineation of legal trail number one. Yeah. But all point aside, yeah. um, I think we all recognize it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, and we're 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 gonna correct them, you know. I mean there there are several things and I and I, I know Denise that uh, uh, we are very concerned about everything and, and like I said I we will get to the bottom of this and do our best to make it not happen again. Well it's going to happen again because now they want to build off uh up Kaminsky's property up on top of Moortown Mountain Road there it's been divided up four times and that's legal trail 11 and I met Martin up there not too long ago and you know you don't know where that legal trail is it goes smack dab through the field right over the top of a 4,000 foot well drilled right over the top of the legal trip and a horizontal of a quarter mile that well goes the well heads right flush with the ground where's the health inspector on that it's flowing right out on the ground it's going to, you know, that's, that's a health issue. It's this big around. It's almost 24 inches round. You know, and that's right smack dab. That's everybody's well. That's right smack dab in the middle of legal trail 11. Hmm. And that just got divided up, and those people plan on building up there. And how they can access their road, they may have a different legal right away, but legal trail is what they may presume to go off it. So these issues uh, were brought up back in October 4th, back in 2021, by our old zoning administrator. And he went into great detail about these issues. So this has been on the docket for quite some time, I believe. And I'm right with you, uh, Ray, you hit the nail right on the head. Hopefully we, you do what you say you're gonna do. So, I guess yeah. I can work with Sasha on a letter and okay. try to get some. Yeah, that would, that would be good. Uh, you, to, you know, you can <clears throat> draft a letter. I could send you over something within a couple of days of what I think, and then we, you know, everybody else can take a look at it. And then on another note, the, the uh, planning board's working on creating some. Uh, a document that we can address how people are going to perceive building on a trail. They are working on that? Well, yeah. I thought we discussed that at one of our meetings. Yeah, yeah. I'm working on yes. it. sitting in all meetings. They haven't, they're not currently working on well, it. We had talked that about, is. okay, I'll, I'll correct myself. We had talked about yeah. that that needs to be addressed, that we make the changes in our zoning documents to reflect the pressures that we're now starting to see on building on these roads that we, you know, come up with clearer 
yep. language about what people can do and how they right. need to, to uh, address the living on these roads. And that, uh, no, he, he, Mark Knight, I know you don't want to hear this, Travis, but <laughs> we, may, we may have to have a committee. Well, that's what I was going to bring up. Okay. They were actually saying, they're actually saying that uh, Ray was going to be head of the committee. Yeah. Well, so, uh, because because in, in working together on that. Right. Yeah. right. So we have the uh, new zoning administrator, the planning commission, well, we select, select board members. members. But, you know, what it has to do is a focused committee right. working on yeah. these things because that's one of the problems whenever there's something joint with the planning commission is the two boards just aren't going to be able to meet all the time. And of course, no. of course, like Martin and somebody from somebody else if you want. Well, that brings up another issue. According to statutes, Martin has authority on town highways. And the statute, I can't read off the top of my head here right now, but the statute basically says he has authority over town highways. And a legal trail is not a town highway. So, I mean, just to look into that maybe further, but um, basically, uh, I know there's going to be a committee. I was at the Planning Commission last Wednesday, and uh, they mentioned such a thing, and uh, they suggested that Ray may be uh, the chair or somebody on it. But we've also had these committees before, and we also had a meeting that no minutes were ever posted or ever taken back in 2016, 2017. And... There was a lot of people. It was in the town clerk's office down here. Um, there was Reed Coral was involved then, and a bunch of other people. And well, then there was, was longer than that because it was in 2015-ish. Right the town hall that's been gone since the flood. No, the the town. Um, oh hall. Hall. Oh, the town. We had that place packed full of people that lived on legal trails and class four yeah. roads. No minutes are ever posted on that. And then we also had a financial committee meeting afterwards, which I, I'm well aware of those. Well, we're, we're, we've cleaned that up. Or, or in well, the process of it. well, the point is, we had that we had that meeting, and this was back when we uh, we already had a legal trail class four road committee, mm -hmm. which is still on the website, um, and we had meetings, and they're they're not posted. Hmm. You know, regarding these issues. Did Mace, did you want to say something? Uh, just, I just wanted to add that if there is going to be a road committee, um, I hope that the purpose of it is very clearly defined what the role of the committee is. and that that is communicated to the public because it doesn't make any sense to form a different committee um, with not, you know, and not have a clear and concise purpose and, and mission for it. Understand. So I, I just wanted to add that. That's all. No, that's that's a good point. Thanks, Denise. With with that said, it's got one more thing, and I brought this up a few meetings ago with John. Is we have a policy that the select board is supposed to abide by on these class four and legal trails, and it's basically the state statutes, and it's kind of just gone in the wind. I mean, it is your responsibility as a select board for these issues to know where these legal trails are, to know where these class four roads are, and any issues that become on those uh, town highways. It is strictly the select board's responsibility. So even if we have this committee, it's still the select board's responsibility. You're right. It's not the committee's responsibility. The committee makes recommendations. Yeah, it's yeah, just an advisory right. committee. So. Yeah, advisory committee is a good word. Yeah. All right, so okay. we can... We can Certainly, I, I guess I don't mind being on some sort of committee or advisory <laughs> committee. Um, let me figure out a schedule here, and you know, I'm, I'm sure uh, we can figure out who's going to be on it. But okay, Travis, you already have volunteered, right? Well, it sounds like you're already there, so <laughs> I'm pretty close to it. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess I have. Okay. 
I made it this far in all this BS, so yeah. I'll keep going. And I think Denise, you might want to be on too. Yeah. Sure. Okay. okay. Any thoughts, Martin? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty torn on the whole thing. Uh, it's it's pretty messy. I mean, even our class four road policy right now with the A and B is pretty convoluted and it, it, it is messy. It is. It's very messy. Um, I know surrounding towns, most of them do nothing with class fours. Um, then there's statutes saying that you know you're responsible for you know waterways and blah blah blah. So it's a double-edged sword. I know right now, um, Brownsville, we've got a culvert that there's water running right down the middle of the road. The last I'd heard, the board had agreed that they wanted us to reset. Basically, it was sitting on top of the ground and it got pushed up like a lot of culverts did this year yeah. with the frost. And last I knew, the board wanted me to reset that culvert and put one load of gravel over the top of it. And and that was it. So we, yeah, I think still, that's and agreeable I think, because I think we have the responsibility as far as some responsibility as far as maintaining a, a drainage uh, to a certain yeah. point. A connecting stream yeah, and water yeah. and stuff. So um, I don't I don't know why the I don't know how or why surrounding towns get away with doing apparently next I've had numerous discussions with other road crew and foremen, and they just basically wash their hands of their legal trails and glass floors. And yeah. Well, that's what we're probably supposed to be doing, but our town has allowed these individuals to build houses out in the middle of nowhere, which I don't even know how they get there. I really don't. It was all I could do to get up uh, Jacobs Road or what do you mean? Yeah, yeah. Brownsville. yeah. yeah. that's a Brownsville road. road. Yeah. So, I mean, it, and my truck, I mean, I was going to bottom out every culvert I went over. So if a fire truck made it up there, good luck. And then we all know, you know, when season hits and then it's, you know, the residents are like, uh, you know, emergency vehicles can't make it. It's like, well, you know, this year we had class three roads that they yeah. <laughs> might not have made it. So you're not, you know, then they immediately turn to, you know, the road crew to come and fix their problems. And it's... Well, that's where it becomes a burden, and that's my biggest yeah. complaint with these class four and legal trails, is right. it puts a burden on Martin. I mean, it puts a burden yeah. on the taxpayer, yeah, every that's single right. person. Yeah, that's right. And that's why it's in the town plan not to upgrade these roads, because it becomes a very highly big expense. Now we're not going to do culverts. I got a culvert below my house. It's not even on the culvert survey. Why? You know, I just met with Allison Andrews, which I know she just met with, with Martin on that issue, on something to do with around that issue. And that culvert's been there for 40 years. How come that's not on the culvert survey? And it's a connecting stream right across the brook. Culverts like that need to be replaced, not class four road culverts. Right. So that's, that's why we'll the advisory committee to help work on this thing. That's right. To get it clearer to people that they can't you want to put the be on, on these roads. Yeah. If you yeah. want to live out on these roads, well, this is what you have to do. Right. Maybe we so, just haven't made that clear enough. So I will just add to that that, and that's great. So now you're going to mandate that they're responsible for updating, keeping the road up to snuff. So that requires a working right away permit. Which then, how do you tell somebody that just spent $150,000 on a chunk of land that they're going to put another 80000 into a road to get to it that may or may not be on an actual legal trail? Right. Because we have no idea whether the legal trail is where it is. It looks like it may be the path, but... I'm sure I have that legal trail 17. You had it coming way down below my house and all the maps. And right. something has to be done before they buy the land. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as a, yeah. as a buyer, they have yeah. a responsibility for looking at what they're buying. Yeah. <laughs> I would think. And the seller, too. Our, our seller. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but the other thing is, too, and I brought this up in the past, financial institutions on Denise McCarty's house. She has a loan now from Norfield Savings Bank. She may or may not have paid off. Norfield Savings Bank, you know, that puts a financial institution at risk. And our town's helping 
this stuff happen by allowing the people to live out in these middle of nowhere places. They can live out there, they can have insurance in their house, they can have a loan, but they might need a special writer for those houses to be able to provide the insurance needed for the loan. Well, they don't provide the loan. Yeah. Well, they have loans. No, so, I know. <laughs> you know so that's where the issue. bank shouldn't provide the loan, basically. The bank, uh, so we we the normal yeah. Yeah. I think because the I think we're going down a rabbit hole that yeah, we, we, need don't. To oh, yeah. 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 we don't need to go down at the moment. Right. You know. Thank you. Yeah. No, okay, so Ray, you'll take charge of that and yeah. see if, so if, so if if Tom wants to be on it, or otherwise, I I guess I, I can. can. Or, or you can go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you were working on trails earlier. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. Okay. So before you leave, Travis, I should get your phone number yeah, so okay. contact info. Mm -hmm. I have Denise's info. Okay. Good. That sounds good. Yep. Okay. And, 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 you right and Martin, you. your input is really important too. So. Yeah. So I think would like to be a part of it <laughs> in some fashion. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Thank you, Stefan. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you, Stefan. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you, Denise. Yes, thank you, Denise. I'll be in touch. Thank you. Okay, that's uh, that everything that you had on that. It's enough, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, one other note. I, you know, I haven't done anything. You know, we've talked about the uh, the other two trails that we want surveyed. I have not done anything because uh, this is really I've been focusing on this, and and we were waiting for a map, which we now have. Yeah. So. Okay. It's coming. It's coming around. Okay. No, that, that's. Did we realize that we don't have enough money for these surveys? Oh yeah, I, I, I yeah, that. yeah, that too. Yeah. So, I mean, that, uh, that's going to be the. Yeah, we may not be able to do one this year. We may have to get an estimate and add more money in next year for uh, one survey. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you're, you're currently have a survey out right now, still though, right? We've only uh, asked for pricing. But we don't have any contract that I know of. Well, uh, in the past meetings, they said it's already moving forward. You needed some certain maps on uh, over by your way. Uh, I, don't, I don't know the legal, the, the, yeah, the, uh, the legal trail or. I have not signed any contract. Yeah, no, no. I think we discovered at one of our meetings that we, we budgeted like five thousand. We budgeted. That's not even going to pay for the guy to drive. There. We budgeted. We got hourly rates from Vermont Survey. Yeah. yeah. But I have not. Reached out to them yeah. to go okay. look at any any road or do any work. I have that's not what was portrayed on the meeting, so that's all I was questioning. Okay. No. Because they said uh, yeah, the name of the surveyor. I don't have it from me. Come on, survey. Or what's his name? Yeah, Stephen Claude Felter. No, that's uh, Stephen. Uh, Stephen Fraser. Stephen Fraser. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So. What I wanted, you know, I have, it's been a long time since I've been up there and looked at the one uh, from Moore Brook. Um, again, that's one where we're, we have, we're giving um, or supplying six yards of stone every year um, because the area in question goes through Ladue's property. Ladue's, right. So six yards of stone is, you know, 500 bucks or whatever. You know, is that worth a ten thousand dollar survey to fight about if we just say okay we're just going to do this right. everybody's happy with it whether it's on the right location or not i don't know but that it may, it may be that's an answer i'm not saying it's the right answer but you know the right answer is yeah let's get everything located yeah but you know we don't have enough money yeah, there. Are, there are there on that particular one with some concrete blocks blocking the way yeah there are concrete blocks up there that are blocking and i think that's blocks. a big issue we should remove i thought the, the blocks were removed they were up there this spring. I've been through there and it was two separate people said that they were up there. I mean, they were up there. I don't know they were earlier, but I, I they thought Jeff said he removed them 
No. Okay, so that's why I need to go up because obviously you. Unless there's a slight more general gain blocking, you know, which you could do. Because I know Abair told me I was blocked, and then I asked Jeff, is the road blocked? And he said, no. He took no. The they, um, I heard from two separate people that it was blocked okay. this spring, like March, April. So it is blocked. Still blocked. You know. mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Other old business. Tom? Well, I don't know. Want to talk about what? Well, got a couple of things to talk about. <clears throat> well, I mean, on the on the transportation stuff, um, you were also, I mean, raised sent his email out because he found out about those signs, you know, the flashing signs that we could possibly get. And John and I have been uh, working with Joyce Manchester a bit, you know, just identifying some transportation items. And um, one of them was what Sasha just sent out the other day was the, the speed drop to over on Route 2, and they did a study and they're going to drop the speed limit from 40 to 35 miles an hour and there's public comment available for that on Wednesday at 1. And I was going to ask you, did you, I, I can't find the Zoom link on that. I've seen the guy, the email oh. all about it, but you know, in order, I know they said it's a hybrid meeting, but oh, I that's, haven't that's seen, right, yeah. I haven't seen anything. Well, yeah, check that out. Because they sent, uh, what I've noticed is the guy sent you the info the uh, email and you accepted it so I think maybe it's I don't know I didn't see it in his email so, so can you check on that Denise yeah because now I have a conflict and I yeah so I like could maybe see. call but, yeah. at least they have someone there for that for that aspect okay and they did this comprehensive study I don't know if anybody had a chance to read that email about it. So that you know, 30 mile an hour, is that up to Gallagher Acres? Well, no, it's going to go from to 35, which is what Route 100 does as it comes into that traffic light, you know, from, yeah. from the school. And now it's going to go from uh, basically Gallagher's Acres, I Gallagher, guess. Gallagher, yeah, to the where line. they dropped it to 40. Remember, they dropped it to 40, from 50 to 40. Yeah. We did that a few years ago, well, probably longer than that now, but. To 40, so that whole area is going to be dropped to 35. Laura Gans had submitted the letter requesting 25, but we knew that probably wouldn't. Well, with the wouldn't study they it. did, they they came up with all these 30, statistics 35. that 30, they could go to 35. And oh. and once that, once they change that, I'm gonna or between. Don, Joyce, and myself, I'm going to push for lowering the whole the speed limit all along that whole section of Route 2. You, 50 is just too fast for well, that roads are section. Up, where you got to go slower than Well, I, I know. Well, it I does know. have its speed. But now that you, sure. you, know, you have the low-income housing in there, and you have, you know, it, it's a residential neighborhood. It just should not be that high. Yeah. So, Especially when it gets paid this year. Yeah, yeah, it's going to make it, yeah. So the, earth, and it's, you know, there's this curves and stuff, so. And the other item mm -hmm. that uh, is, we're trying to meet with someone from the state is here in the village um, to see if the radar, the, what's it, I always, radar speed, oh, yeah, the speed sign, I, I forget what, I can't. Speed feedback sign. Feedback sign. Radar so the one that's by feedback. the, um, the post office fire station, that one, right? We, we've talked about this before. We're trying to see if it could get moved to be on the, as you come into the village after you come over the bridge before Dennis Freckert's house. And That'd it would say the speed there and, and to slow people down as they come into the village past the town garage and yep. around that corner. That's where it should be, for sure. So we're trying to get to meet with someone from the state. And that's, you know. To come out and actually physically look at it, and and also talk about crosswalks. And I'd like, actually, I'd like to bring them down past there. I got another call from Jerry Maynard. People are just speeding by, by his house as I fast know. As, as ever. I know. And, uh, and it's I think just speeding everywhere. I, uh, I know. It's just it's just yeah. off. And 
something just has to be done. I just talked to someone from the sheriff's office today, and uh, uh, we talked about uh, more town talking to the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. They're ready for us. They're ready for us? They're ready to move forward with something. I thought that. I thought that's not what they told us. That's not what they told us. They sounded like they were understaffed. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, that was uh, that was state police that was understaffed. No, no, it was the sheriff. The sheriff was running both. They both. They said both. Both of them said they were understaffed. We'll see you again tomorrow, so I'll see. Yeah. No, well, we'll check it out too. Um, <clears throat> so that's sort of an old business item that. Um, we're working on. Um, and so the, the pricing, it looks like you got prices on both the cart type the and, the, and the fixed. And the fixed. And with the fixed, we we're going to put, what, what would the fixed? Not, not more in the village, it would be up on wherever we want. Wherever we want. You know, but obviously, more Town Mountain would be a prime. Right. Yeah. Well, road, road, I should think fine. the mobile would make more sense because yeah. we're moving around. At this point, um, mm -hmm. you know, the mobiles are I think ten thousand a piece. Yeah, I think it was because we talked about get, we could get two for right. what we were paying for. The, sign, the signs are about six thousand a piece. Right. If you so, get the, the one that has the actual feedback. Yeah. So uh, at this point, you know, I, I think we should get two of the mobile ones. And start placing them around town. Are we gonna switch these around? Like yeah. Around? Yeah. Now, based on what Tom, uh, what Sasha sent us today, from you know that Tom wanted us to look at, it looks like, and John references earlier in the meeting that there's some state statutes that are changing that are gonna allow towns or municipalities to start to um, uh, take control of, you know, of changing speed limits on, on their on town roads, not on state roads still. Because but it was in the past that we couldn't change them on a town road even without going through a whole process with the right. state. But is that how you read that? No, I, I read yeah. that we can we can put um, calming devices. Oh. So I mean, we could put speed bumps in the road. But we can't, oh right, traffic timing devices yeah. as well, right? Yeah. But we can also change, oh, yeah. from what I read, we could change a speed limit that's 35, that's kind of cuckoo on some of these roads, because people are to 30 or 25, if, you know, at some point, as we get along in this. Yeah, I, I mean, know. my understanding is if you want to go be up below 35, that's when you have to speed step. Well, that's I even still. I don't know. I mean, Maybe that town, I, I, is, I, I, I don't know. I think. Do you know what act that is? What's that? What act that is? Like through legislation that allowed that? Yeah. No. Um, I well, have the one, it's 181. The, the new one is yeah. 181. Yeah. I wrote that number. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I would certainly like to see the speed limit reduced everywhere. Yeah, we'd have to re-sign everything. No, no, I, think, I know, but you can you can do a five-year plan. You can yeah, do it yeah. ten years. It's not doesn't have to be all done tomorrow. You know. Oh well, yeah, I mean, Moortown is people are doing 65, 70 on that road. I, I understand. I know. Yeah, yeah. 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 speed limit's thirty-five yeah. now, so you can make it twenty-five, make it five, and there's yeah, people yeah, still you know, I, I, it, so. I get it. <laughs> I, I, we've lost all common courtesy. If we've got the 20,000 in the budget, I mean, I would really like to see if the Sheriff's Department would be willing, because that's still our best route to go, because the mobile units, you know, they're flash the speed, but that's not going to catch anybody. It's not going to catch it. So, so I mean, you know. I'd actually be a little worried on working on Mountain Road if it's being vandalized, to be honest. Yeah. There's a lot of it. Yeah, sure, sure. There's an option, too, with a computer in it. Yeah, yeah, well, even for the mobile yeah, ones yeah, yeah. that will record yeah. that that you can get. So okay, that, right. Well, well, yeah, I, right. Again, well, I, th I thought the data that it recorded was just the speed that people were going. But I think you can you know, set them up for like, more than that. Like license plate. I think so. so yeah, that would be that would be ideal. I don't know if that's you have to put correct labeling if you're going to take pictures of people's vehicles going at mm -hmm. speed limits. There's places in Killington that have that. 
Uh -huh. And there's very, very few places in Vermont that have that. Hmm. Right. But I'm not saying it probably wouldn't be possible, you just might have to put proper signs up for it. Right. Yeah, it's probably connected with that, like you can't, law enforcement can't hide. Exactly, yeah. It's probably connected to that. Like so, you can't hide so it's, anyways, it's a work in progress. The first route should be the sheriff. The sh I would say that. Yeah, or the state yeah. police. Uh, yeah. It looks like state police is definitely up. Either way, if we cannot get some enforcement, then we're going to you know, try to do our best yeah. with, with some sort of signage. But right, yeah. we're, we're limited. You know, we, none of us uh, can, can pull anybody over and say, okay, this is it. I'm giving you a ticket. We can't do that. Right. But I think... A lot of people, not all of them, but a lot of people go fast and don't even realize it. They're just getting in their car and they're driving along. And they yeah, don't realize it. There are people that live in these houses. And, you know, I see them, you know, come down or up past my house and, holy mackerel. You know, if, if I was backing out or crossing the road. Yeah, well, you know, that's what uh, Maynard's going for, for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who wants to pull that fast on a dirt road? Enjoy. I've seen them right after they're green. It's like marble because they got that granite on the road currently. Yeah. And I've seen those rocks flying good oh, 50, yeah, 60 yeah. feet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, then as a, I don't know, this is probably still a glory on old business. Yeah, we're still on old business. So I sent out to everybody on Thursday. Um, this is, we got in the town hall, an RFP to, um, get the services of a uh, design firm to take everything that we've put together in the last year and get it, you know, make, get a design schematic together to, uh, for, you know, in a process, I don't know if you've got to read this, you know, and through some additional meetings and to get some, you know, narrow some of the changes down and get so that we can have a, you know, pick what we, want to do or not do, so that eventually in the schedule that's outlined in here, that we would, be, would have something ready for town meeting in March of 2023, next, you know, next March. So, um, but the, the point of this is, is that it should really go out like this week, based on the schedule that we've put together. You know, we've reviewed it with Cheryl Lynn as far as some of the uh, language in the back about uh, you know submitting it and insurance requirements and stuff and uh, you know it's very elaborate about the proposal evaluation with the select board and the town and the you know town hall committee and you know more town library and such and um, so I'm hoping that we could I'd like to you know get this out I, I'm having a feeling that no one got a chance to really read it. I, I heard it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so this is yeah. this is like you know the, here we are. This is now the next step in our going forward with uh, truly you know get, fixing up the town hall and keeping it as a, a, a beautiful building and being a more of a community center uh, with the library with the you know all the other uses that we have and some of the uses that we identified during more fests and walkthroughs and, you know, all the community engagement. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do we, we need a motion to do that or just a nod? I, I, I don't know. I, I'd say, yeah, make, make a motion. Uh, okay, so I'll make a motion that we send out the RFP for the Moortown Town Hall uh, to uh, architects. Yeah, we have, uh, we've got so far five firms five or six firms that have expressed an interest in, okay, so in submitting a proposal, yeah. I guess we don't need to specify where architects No, are. no, I mean, some, uh, I gotta go back, double back with some of them and, you know, it's been... So well, that's my motion, that we send out the RFP to the architects for the Ford Town Town Hall. Okay. Right. Renovations. I will second that. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. okay. All right, good, there we go. Okay, and uh, one more thing, because I know we still have to go back to, to some of the things, but um, the town forest management plan, I uh, think that uh, 
pretty much between Ray, myself, and Don. Uh, Don and I will work on this one here, and uh, are part of the committee, and Ray, when we start the forest management plan and the tra uh, tract of land on Murtown Mountain Road, uh, Ray will be involved. So I'm planning uh, to get uh, all those parties from our committee. Oh boy, well, well, here we go. We have to one meeting and so on. Um, <clears throat> uh, together next week at some point. So I'll let you know, Denise, so that you can post that. <clears throat> When are these committees all going to start being posted on the website? How are we doing on the website? We have so many committees right now that are not posted. It's not a good process. Chuck is yeah. helping compose some more questioning. Yeah. Because he can't really commit to interviewing. Um, okay. We're working on it. We have one committee that's been a major violation ever since it's been in existence. We make it big work on it tomorrow. So these committees need to get cleaned up. Start putting them on the website. Start putting their agendas out. I'm, I'm a real stickler of it because the transparency of this town is not too transparent. Well, that is a good point, but if I have to, I have to work on that. Okay, um, any other old or new business? Good, seeing none, then um, um, Sasha, do you have anything for reports communications? No, other than we have right there. Um, okay. Sherilyn, was, Sherilyn was awarded a grant for the study on route, sidewalk study on route two. So she needs a signature on that, and then there's a grant okay. agreement for the other one that she's been working on. That's something to do with that, I believe. The letter of intent. Yes. And then this one. That one. Oh, okay. The third one. Okay. So grant agreement, standard grant agreement, and advancement of a transportation project known as Moortown TAP TA2211. And there's a detailed description. Is that a project that the state is coming out with, John? Is that what that is? Yeah. Did, did you go through this? I have. It all was Sasha or? I haven't. No? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I knew I should get my glasses. <laughs> you did that on purpose. <laughs> I see you have a new pair of glasses, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, you have it. <laughs> Okay, so this is the grant agreement for the uh, sidewalks over in Moortown North. A grant. All oh, right, okay. Uh, uh, what we just talked about. Yeah. Okay, I thought you said that was a different one. There's two different ones. She needs a signature on that one, but I don't. Sidewalk don't scoping know. study. Moortown. Right. Okay. 100. 
And this, this is on the hydrologically connected municipal roads. Okay. It's what? It's the it's <clears throat> municipal roads grants in the aid program. So that's the other thing Charlene's applying for. Okay. Gotcha. What does that mean? But that one that's part of the um, stuff that Martin was talking about. Um, municipal roads permit. Oh, okay. For uh, work on class three roads. Well, hy hydrologically, yeah, all, which pretty okay. much all the roads in Moortown are hydrologically connected. Okay. So. And then that one's the awarded one. Really? Oh. The game you got was washed all the time. Yeah. Stuff like that. Okay. And that wasn't nice. All right, that's just one signature. Okay. You have some other stuff. Anything, Anything else here? here? That's one. I guess we can put it. The CB fiber we won't be signing the sketch, so I guess pull that one. So, and those documents that he dropped off is did you get all those? Or no. He said he may have this afternoon, but it was after I left. I'll send these to you guys tomorrow. Okay. So you can read them. Yep. Okay, the last thing that we did not do is approving the minutes of 516. That's a good idea. I make a motion. Second. Discussion? I don't think I can vote on it because I wasn't here. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. I read it. Okay. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Anything else before we sign these and adjourn? I hope Tom's back next time. This meeting's gone on a long time, John. Yeah, John. Yeah, my fault. There's too many guests. Too much of me acting. This is old school. I'm driving home in the dark, way dark. Well, oh, I remember. Some of those meetings just go to 10, 11 o'clock. I remember. Yeah, that's that, right. Back in the day. Some of the Berlin yeah. ones go to like yeah. nine or ten o'clock. When I was on the board in the early 2000s, yeah, we had an advocate home at 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. Well, I remember they used to start at seven, too. Well, that's true, too, though. That's where we're heading, you know, in this town. Easy nine, ten o'clock at night. Yeah, I try to If it goes over two hours, it's another meeting because people are burnt. Lose focus, make bad decisions. I'm signing a fleet pit, pit, fleet permit for Jerry Tabor. Is it Tabor? <laughs> and for Cardinal Logistics Management Corporation. And for Consolidated Communications, uh, just a vehicle permit. And then a fleet permit for Gri Griffin, Griffin and Sons Action Page. What? That road maintenance one that's still in question. Oh. I don't think we're going to sign it. No. No, I'll just go back and see. I want to sit right here. I want to sit right here. Get in there. Here we go. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Speak. 
Yeah. Uh, what's, the, what's the best way to reach you? I'll give you my info and my not on record. Okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Board writer signature's getting as big as mine. Well, that's all I do on my phone. Sometimes it has no control. Just the top one. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yeah. The new map's on the website, though, is that what they're saying? I mean, on all our copies. No, I mean, the new map's on the website. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Okay. I'm going to get a hard copy. Oh, huh. yes. Reports and communication. Dear Sherilyn and the Moore John community, wow, thank you for your donation during our spring supporting member campaign. Hi, together we help neighbors, or just together we help neighbors connect and we support local business and nonprofits. Donation, donation makes a big difference. This is really Michael, Valerie, and the entire Front Porch Forum team. Okay. Speak to our for all you peace. Where are we done? Okay. Okay. I make the motion. Second. Come on, favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Well, I think we got a lot done.